I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Nevada, this court. Oh, Welcome back. We're never going to forget that moment out of Las Vegas. Diabra Redden, a criminal defendant, jumping up and attacking Judge Holthus. Uh, that happened back on January 4th. Um, he was back in court today. And, and there he is, walking inside the courtroom. Looks a little bit better, a little more calm at this moment. Um, has the mask on. You will recall that on January 9th, he was charged for attacking the judge. And that uh, the, the, those charges include attempted murder. Take a listen. Mr. Redden, have you been given a copy of the criminal complaint this morning? Yes, I have been given one. You're being charged with count one, attempt murder, victim 60 years of age or older, a felony. Count two, battery on a protected person resulting in substantial bodily harm, victim 60 years of age or older a felony. Count three, extortion by threat, a felony. Count four, intimidating a public officer, a felony. Count five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all battery on an officer, the same name victim. Oh, and by the way, I do not know any of the other victims named in the criminal complaint. Uh, those are all felony offenses. Count 10, performance of act or neglect of duty and willful or wanton disregard of safety or persons of property resulting in substantial bodily harm or death a felony. Battery on a protected person, count 11, that's a gross misdemeanor offense. Count 12, battery by a prisoner, a felony. Count 13, unlawful act related to human excrement or bodily fluid, a felony. All allegedly occurring on January 3rd of 2024. All right, long, long list of charges, right? So um, today he was in court to formally enter a plea on those charges. Listen carefully. Sir, how do you plead? Um, not guilty. Okay, and uh, then we need to go ahead and give this gentleman a trial date. Uh, the question I have got for you is that will uh, you waive your right to a speedy trial? Um, yes. Okay. Um, he well, no, he's invoking his right to a speedy trial, Your Honor. Oh. And specifically, he's also pleading not guilty um, based upon reason of insanity. So I want to make that clear pursuant to statute. We have 21 days prior to trial um, to make that announcement. But it would be not guilty by reason of insanity. Okay, not guilty by reason of insanity. Now... Legal insanity, you can be mentally ill and not legally insane. They're two different things. Legal insanity is a legal standard used in courts. Uh, mental illness is a diagnosis. So you can be diagnosed with a mental illness but not be legally insane. Of course, you can be mentally ill and legally sane as well. So let's take a look. And it all goes back to the time of the alleged crime. So let's go back to just before the alleged crime just before he jumps over the bench and listen to this defendant, because this will be key evidence in the case. Is he acting like or sounding like someone who is legally insane? Mr. Redden, is there anything you want to say on your own behalf before I pronounce that? Um, so basically, I would like to tell the courts like, based on my criminal history, like, I feel, I feel that, like, I should be like sent to prison for a second time. Um, Have you looked at your criminal history? Um, Have you looked at your criminal history? Uh, I actually just, um, um, I look at it. And, yeah. I mean, you lived it, I suppose. Uh, I just looked at it, yeah. Yeah. And, um, Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. Yeah, um, I, I just figured, like. Battery on a protected person, robberies. Home invasion. Go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just. I, I just figured, like, you know, I'm, in, I'm in a better place in my mind. I'm in a better place. I have a support system. I just got hired as a teamster for, you know, a union, you know, making $20 an hour. And, like, the, the reason behind every single demand. 
domestic violence, I was dealing with mental health, and I didn't know that I was dealing with mental health. And they put me in mental health court, and I still didn't know that I had a mental health problem. And so it was August 2022 when I realized I have a problem with this. And like having a dictionary and like understanding myself, getting on myself a little better, and, and, and applying it to my personality, and, and, and having a baby at, at that moment those instances and just like trying to learn from my mistakes you know and I, I feel like I shouldn't be sent to prison but if it's appropriate for you then you have to do what you have to do but I figure that you know if I'm in a better place in my life I'm not doing drugs I'm not you know I'm not out there committing crimes now you know and, and I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was then you know so but that's I, I'm a, I'm a person who never stops trying to do the right thing, no matter how hard it is. And I just, you know, and I'm, I'm trying, and I never give up trying to do the right thing. I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm not a rebellious person. I'm not, I, I don't want to be standing there. I want you to have to, you know, sit up there and, and waste your time as well, you know? Uh, I, I, but, I, but the criteria of me saying this is that I'm a person that never stops trying to do the right things, even if it's hard. And I, Okay, and um, I'm sure the jury's going to see that, and they're going to hear it. They'll make a judgment based upon seeing and hearing that. Here's um, his attorney uh, afterwards uh, speaking about this not guilty by reason of insanity plea. Just like everybody else, and looking at the video... Um, I thought Mr. Redden was either out of his mind or on drugs at the time of this incident. But after extended um, discussions with Mr. Redden, Ms. Springer, and other family members, I came to find out that he um, suffered from severe paranoid schizophrenia. Prior to this um, incident and at the date of the incident, he was without his medication. So without being on his medication, he suffered from this mental defect and this unfortunate incident happened. It causes him not to be aware of the nature and circumstances of what he did and not um, bring his behavior in compliance with the law. So basically, he was out of his mind and not in control of what he was doing. Okay, let's bring in our think tank. Eckler Mercy, Kirk Nermi, Neem Romani. Kirk, your thoughts about... This plea is this. Uh, he ha he does have prior mental illness history, so uh, that's that to me gives a little little more credibility than to a lot of the legal insanities that we see that are just like we don't have anything else. So, what are your thoughts tonight? Well, I still think it's a we don't have anything else, Vinny, because we, we, let's think about this here. We watched him. You could roll that. The prosecutors are going to roll the tape of him talking coherently to the judge and then him jumping over the bench. You're going to have witnesses. The whole crime's caught on camera. It's going to be easy for prosecutors to prosecute this case in a day or two. So Mr. Redden's attorney is really all but forced to go in to say, okay, this guy has some mental illness. He's got a history of it. This is what I got to provide him the best defense, because otherwise there really is no defense. So this is the only road I believe that Mr. Redden's defense can travel down. Nima, your thoughts? Oh, Vinny, I agree with Kirk completely. I mean, this is a defense, but not a good one, really a legal Hail Mary, because it's such a high standard. I remember when this incident happened, actually Court TV interviewed Mr. Redden's sister, and there's clearly like a documented history of mental illness. But the standard, Vinny, is, as we all know, as lawyers, you don't know right from wrong because of a mental disease or defect. You can't understand the consequences of your actions. And here's someone that just got upset because he's going to be sentenced to prison and he attacked the judge. I think really the only defense, Vinny, he has here is maybe to attack the specific intent of the attempted murder. You know, obviously he's going to be convicted of aggravated assault, you know, as an elderly victim as well. So there's certain things that are indefensible, but maybe just maybe his lawyers can get him off on the attempted murder charge. Eklund Mercy, clear mental illness history. It seems like it's documented. Um, but at this particular hearing, he doesn't get upset until he realizes that he's going back to prison. I, I think he was a taking time bomb. I think that um, how the judge handled it um, after um, once he uttered mental health illnesses, I think how she was kind of dismissive 
of his mental health was an issue. Um, as a defense attorney, when we see our clients, when people see the client, you're seeing them at their best. You don't know what happened in the back of the courtroom. Um, essentially, what you're telling them is, hey, uh, b b if you're held accountable, there's redemption, right? If you do right, there's going to be some type of redemption. And he just made a whole speech about how he was doing right and how what the wrong he did was because he had mental health. It was not his fault. He said he tried to find help. He, he got a new job. He's making $20 an hour. Why are you sending me back to prison? And she just reads, her, reads the criminal history very flippant. Like, if you're in that position, if you are very afraid of prison, you just gave your whole heart out for somebody to say, I hear you and I don't care. That is what when the break happened. That is when you can't take it anymore. Because what else do they want? You know, um, if if you if he he went to prison before, he didn't know he had a mental health illness. Now he does. Now he's better. And now you're telling me, hey, for the crime that you weren't treated before, yeah, let's throw you back in prison. He's going to have a break. You know, uh, Kirk, we only have about 20 seconds here, but part of what he's saying uh, uh, before he jumps is he's kind of explaining that he's, he, he knows the difference between right and wrong. He knows the wrong things he did. He says, I'm writing myself. So it's like he's almost confessing to knowing the difference between right and wrong before he jumps at the judge. And he offers this very coherent uh, background on it, how he's got insight into it now and how he's working to take care of it. Three seconds later, he's jumping over the bench. And that's why I say playing this video, both in terms of dispelling the mental health or the insanity plea, as well as meeting the elements of the crime, I think it'll make it a very much a slam dunk case for the prosecution. All right. Stay Wait, uh, 10 seconds. I'll give you the final word, Eklund. People who commit suicide have the best days beforehand. They have the best days beforehand. Their families can tell you that. Mental health is nothing that we can just put a script to. I think he just had a break. Gotcha.